Like everyone else and their dog, we've heard the rumors about DirectX 12 and Vulkan and how great they're gonna be. I mean, we're talking stuff like massive frame rate increases, the ability to combine performance between GPUs, even those from different manufacturers, and a drastic reduction in CPU bottlenecks, so we thought this topic deserved a little bit of love. Let's start with what's an API. An API, or an application programming interface, is defined very roughly as an operating system's available resources and tools that developers can use to create software with. Or in other words, they're like the, the Lego bricks that a programmer's inner child can use his or her imagination to build with. There are some problems that can arise from this approach, however, and whether through the desire to keep the blocks simpler to use at the expense of their effectiveness, or the bloat of supporting legacy features, an underperforming API can have a dreadful impact on the performance of the finished program. A big problem for gamers who want more realistic water effects and facial animations, but don't want to spend a thousand bucks on a shiny new graphics card. That's where the Mantle API came in. AMD sought to give programmers more direct access to how their software interacted with the graphical processor, allowing them to better optimize their software and improve performance. And while they were generally successful in achieving this, the game support list is still pretty small, and without other graphics chip makers on board, that train was unlikely to ever leave the station. That is where the more established graphics API players, you may have heard of Microsoft and Kronos? That's where they come in. They're poised to deliver their DirectX 12 and Vulkan APIs respectively. And while these are technically two different approaches, they seem to be headed towards similar goals. Both work to minimize graphical driver overhead by simplifying protocol routes and reducing operation redundancies. And both, aside from adding features for more simplicity and realism, etc., focus heavily on preventing draw calls, the commands given by the CPU to the GPU to render something, from being a bottom bottleneck as more and more objects appear on screen in a given scene. Oh, and also to assist multi-threaded CPUs with more evenly spreading out their workload to theoretically improve performance by leaps and bounds. But as amazing as some of the demos we've seen have been, I mean, Microsoft showed off more than double performance in the Asteroids demo at GDC 2015, the rainbow uh, probably won't stretch as far as some may hope, especially with existing games where the bottlenecks being alleviated were already minimized during the development process. But that's not to say that the future, with unbelievable numbers of objects and effects, isn't something to get excited about. For everyone, from the guys who do want to buy $1,000 graphics cards to the guys running several-year-old hardware, since both Vulkan and DirectX 12 will work on existing graphics cards as long as you have a compatible operating system and drive. And while the chances are the rainbow won't stretch as far as some hope, with first reports of real game FPS increases being pretty small, the longer term effects of newer, better tools are hard to measure with old structures, and to think that this extra headroom is going to go unused for long seems fairly naive. No matter how many blocks they put in the bucket, there's always like that one kid who isn't happy until they've used every last one for their castle, and likely that kid has already started building. Speaking of building blocks, Squarespace. Simple, power, beautiful websites with 24-7 tech support via live chat and email. It starts at only eight bucks a month and their sites look great and work on any device, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, or even a phone with something called responsive design. It just means that your website will kind of go, oh, Holy crap, they're looking at it on their phone. I better make sure that they can actually see all the stuff and all the sliders and elements work correctly. They've got all kinds of different templates that you can use, whether it's you want to make an e-commerce site, a blog, a portfolio, or whatever else. And every website comes with a free online store, so you can even sell stuff through it. You can start a trial with no credit card required, so that's a two-week trial to try it out and find out if Squarespace is right for you. And when you decide to sign up, make sure you use offer code LINUS to get 10% off your first purchase. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future fastest possible episodes just like this one. And don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff.